how God is good. I want to start on that note this morning. So this morning, I really want to talk about your confession and the power it has over what happens in your life. But I want to start on this note of God is good. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, no one is good except the Lord. Nobody is good except God. And when he says, makes that kind of statement, you just believe that, okay, God is omnipotent and he created the heavens and the heart. But God is good goes beyond that. He goes beyond that. He, he, God was introducing himself to Moses again. When I mean again, Moses had seen God's power at this point. Exodus 33, the Red Sea has been opened. The Pharaoh and his uh, people has been dealt with terribly. Moses has seen the dimension of God's power. He has seen God's provision. He has seen how God led millions of people out of slavery without an army. Yet Moses got to the flat and said, God, teach me about you, that I may know you. Then this time, God didn't introduce himself and say, I am that I am. God told Moses, I am compassionate. I am slow to anger. I am abandoned in love. And you can see God demonstrate that in the way he deals with everybody that he has created. Do you know it's not only believers that are rich on their hearts. It's not only believers that live in good health. There are unbelievers that obey the principle of sound health and they live in good health. There are unbelievers that learn the principle of wealth and they are rich. The reason is because God is good. The produce of their heart is for all. The produce of their heart, the silver, the gold, the resources on their heart, God gave it to every being he has created, not those, those who believe in Jesus. Those who believe in Jesus are the child of are the children of God. But God has given that's what makes God good. His love is unconditional. And when I was starting out in my Christian faith and I began to encounter God in this way, seeing from the Bible, I began to say to myself, Ah oh God, I am not like you. I will say it in my confession. You are good, you're kind, you're slow to anger. I am not like you. And the more I see it, the more I feel in character formation. I get angry easily. I speak ashly. I speak ashly. I deal with people ashly. I don't give unconditional love. You know why? Because I was defeated by my conf confession. My reality was what I was saying daily before God. It means when God sees me, I was clothed with promises, with confession that, Lord, I am not like you. I am not slow to anger. I'm not abandoned in love until I change my confession. I began to say, I read confessions like, God is slow to anger, is abandoned. And I will say, I am slow to anger. I am abandoned in love. I read confession that says like, angels do his will. And I say, I'm his messenger. I do his bidding. Your confession is your reality. Your confession is your reality. What you say every day, consciously, unconsciously, what you think is what you get. So you have to be careful what you say about yourself this year. You must learn the reason God allows different church family that I call denomination to have what they call word for the year is so that members can sing those words for the year and say it. My his unusual elevation. It means God wants me to meditate, to think it in my consciousness, in my unconsciousness. I am having unusual elevation this year. The only thing I see is promotion, is increase, is blessing, is wealth, is supernatural lifting. Is the things that happened to me this year are things that my strength can do, my effort can do. Unusual elevation, I will get a job that is beyond my qualification. I will have wealth that is beyond my qualification. That's why God has given your own church family a particular confession. Your, what you say is your reality. Let me give you an example. I'm sure we have over 1 million Nigerians are Christians. Imagine if 1 million Christians that are Nigerians that are anointed by God, that have the Spirit of God living inside them every day. 
what we say is Nigeria is bad. The election will be terrible. Nigeria will vote in corrupt rulers again. The people that will be voted will be corrupt rulers. Though when we meet in Sunday, we pray, Father, give us leaders after I pour in our day to day conversation. There is inflation. A, do that is the reality on ground. But imagine if that is what 100 million Nigerians say every day. And that is what gets to God hearing. Christians, believers, that are salt of the earth, that God says, that which they say in my hearing, I will do. It means all we are telling God is, make Nigeria bad. Make our leaders corrupt. Let there be corruption in Nigeria because that is what God is hearing. Two spies were sent to a place. And ten came back saying terrible things about that place. And God said, that which they have said in my arena would do. So this year, your destiny is in your hands. Your destiny is in what you say. The Bible says a man is ensnared by what he says. It means that you are trapped by what you say. Satan will resist your prayer based on what you say. He has rights over what you, you, based on what you say. Do you know what the enemy does when he wants to get at you? He injects his own thoughts into your heart. You are going to be sick because the flu is going around. Coronavirus is and nobody can escape it. And before you know it, if you begin to say those things, instead of saying what God has said about you, a thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, it will not come near me. If you join the multitude saying the church is bad, the church is corrupt, the leaders are bad, when you are supposed to be praying and say, God, we have shepherd after your own heart, we have shepherd that truly care about the people, that's what you have. So this morning, I want to tell you to have the unusual, supernatural elevation that I am believing God for this year. You must be careful what you say. And the only way you can monitor what you say is the scripture says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speak. So, you must be careful what comes into your heart. Is it um, kidnappers who get me and steal on my phone? What do you allow to come into your heart? And how do things get into your heart? What you see, what you read, what you hear. Is it wrong to see wrong things? No, but immediately, anything you see, you check me to the gospel. I was in a vehicle traveling to Akure. And the man they were saying, hey, he entered the vehicle recently and I'm rubber stop. Negative word, I began to speak God's word within me. A thousand shall fall at my right hand. The righteous will not be afraid of people with or it may happen to others. It will not. What I'm doing is I was checkmating immediately what I was hearing. I was telling my heart, those things you're hearing is not the truth. This is the truth. I believe God as we watch what we say. In our homes, over our family, concerning Nigeria. Thank God this year that men of God they gave us a lot of beautiful promises. Because God told you that there is going to be war, it doesn't mean God wants you to announce it over the hair. It doesn't mean that God wants you to say it to the heart so the heart we hear and prepare for war. God told you so that you can checkmate it. You can pray there are believers on the heart. If there is war, would believers not suffer? If there is war, things you've built over 20 years that you want to hand over to your children is destroyed in seconds. So because man of God, God told you there will be war, because Jesus Christ said there will be war, nations will rise against nations. Jesus is saying that because he knows what will happen. He knows that Satan has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And because that is his mission and he's on earth and he has men under his control, there will be war. Nations will rise against nations because of the nature of the enemy and men who follow him. But believers, we should speak peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for in lie your peace. Because God told you there will be war. And because God told you a woman will lose her husband, you don't go to the woman's and look at her. God told me your husband will die. It's a reason for you. God told you so that you can pray. Some God will tell you, it can't change, it will die. You accept it. It doesn't make you a superhero to say, oh, and God told me, oh. So please, let's watch what we say. And then let the Lord will bless us. For me, it's my year of unusual elevation. Promotion in my career, in my business, 
in every area I walk. And because God sustains all things by his word, my life is sustained by it. I increase. I, I inherit the wealth that Jesus purchased for me. I, I walk in God's wisdom. I have intimate relationship with God. I am sorry to tell you, I am perfect as God is. So whatsoever perfection means to God, I am perfect as he is. I love my neighbor as myself. I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my strength, with what all my mind. That is the reality I want to see. And that is the reality that I will confess. And I will not confess what Satan wants me to confess. Once again, have a beautiful day. God bless you.